It will be this way. You know? that's, why that's why we're talking about the good old days. So. Yeah, this is part of it. Yeah, that's what exactly. Because that we will talk about it in the show. So the we show? can start yeah. if you like. All right, well, here, I'm going to push this little button and watch what happens. This is 2OF Entertainment. are back we are live hey hello guys it's been some time two weeks it's been almost a fortnight oh okay not that long but uh, a lot of things change in this those two weeks yeah that's nah, same everything yeah. that's happened yeah change my underwear so i suppose we're moving forward yeah so so are you talking about mr trump winning the election is that what you're talking about oh that's one of it yeah probably the most important or yeah. the most well, that's that's it's it's an inspiration on the other. For example, it's an inspiration for Russia. No, 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 no. Well, Listen. I, I still don't can't work out why everybody's getting so busy because nothing's going to happen until January, end of January. You know, so why is everybody getting busy about it now? Oh, they're you started know, already. I mean, the the the. the, the you know, uh, Biden could still do something quite remarkable between now and the end of the year. He won't. He the could Democrats, say he could say Democrats, like what? The Democrats, the Democrats well, are done. They they lost say, because they have nothing. He and could say won't. to to the Ukrainians, you know what? You can launch all those missiles. That's fine by me. He's not going to say that. Nobody wants World War Three. Well, uh, he, might, I, he, might I, I, he might go out with a bang. You don't know. I don't know how the things work in America. I mean, the political stage uh, in the top level, but I think that he's he cannot do anything now. I think uh, with no uh, agreement from the Trump side now. He can do whatever he wants. He's still president. He doesn't he's have to wait president. for Trump to do whatever. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's the way it works here. Um, I yeah. will say, though, Trump, the... The Democrats, like Reagan, beat Jimmy Carter back in the day. Like Jimmy Carter. When he back in the good old day, you mean? Good old days. When Jimmy Carter was president and when Reagan ran against him, the, the landslide was literally the same landslide, if you will, that we got um, Trump over um, what's her face. Because right now, I don't think they've even done counting. As of this morning, um, Trump got... 312 of the electoral votes compared to 226. They've got yeah. the Democrats had 52 seats in the Senate compared to 46. I'm sorry, Republicans had 52 seats compared to 46. And the House of Representatives, 214 to 203, all on the Republican side. So basically, this was like a repeat of history, which never repeats itself apparently, of the Jimmy Carter Ronald Reagan race back in the uh, 1980. So, you know, listen, the, the Republicans ran a very good race they put aside all the hate speech and all the other crap but if you listen to their policies they actually have policies the democrats have no policy so i i give credit to where credit yeah. is due sounds like you're changing Stephen, because you were very no, no, much. Not, listen, yeah but uh, I, I, said, I said on many shows that i'm okay with their policies what i didn't like was the threat to democracy so i said i'm okay with like you want to i'm not okay with the tariffs but i'm okay with some other things he wants to do but the Democrats didn't come and say anything. I told you on the shows, no one's saying what they're going to do for Medicare, Social Security, the poor. And Elon Musk, in an article, basically wants to cut two trillion dollars out of um, out of the budget. And what he wants to take it from is Social Security, Medicare. So he's going to basically make a civil war, and then um, they want to get rid of hundreds of thousands of federal employees. Um, yeah, under, well, I, think it's called I was Schedule reading F. this morning that it had gone up three percent in in uh, since uh, since Trump was in. It's I, gone up like forty three percent, so three percent more uh, civil servants than there was when Trump was in power. So yeah, there's a lot of fat that could be cut from yeah. the bone. Well, and I'm okay if you cut it, but now here's my question: 
to Mr. Musk because he apparently and his group of hatchet men are going to come in and do this. And that's oh, fine. Yeah, because but he, uh, what are you going to do with these 200,000 people? What jobs are they going to go work? They're going to work in McDonald's. Or they could be, they could be working, they could be building a wall. No, no, I'm being serious. I'm enough with the, the bullshit rhetoric. I mean, no, but, uh, what but, are you really going to do with these people? You have well, you say you get rid of a hundred thousand federal employees and you cut red that's tape. Not that's not relevant. Is that relevant? Is that, it really is, that is relevant. relevant. It is no, because the American people, it's relevant to us. Because no, there, Stephen, there's because a problem the, then. The thing is, right, the American rhetoric is always um, you know, the land of the land of uh, of opportunity, the land of plenty. So right, you've right. then got two hundred thousand people mm -hmm. that have then the ability to go and do something remarkable in their life. Good luck with that. Have you met the federal employees? Well, you know, I mean, that's, that there's no reason why they shouldn't uh, do something remarkable. I, I, I think if they do this, they better come up with a, there better be another plan. As, well, as somebody, well, have to, will they get unemployment benefit then if they, if they get axed? Yeah, but you get, I think it's 26 weeks. What do you do after that? Well, you get a job or you get a job before then. Have you have you been you haven't been to America? There are no jobs, my friend. All right. Like there's tons of them on LinkedIn. And I read this article from this guy who has got a bachelor's or a master's, served in the army, went to like West Point. He's applied, he has a list over five years to five thousand positions, and he figured out that ninety-five percent of the positions on LinkedIn are fake. They're just to get information to send you shit. The five percent are real, get so many applicants, he said that. You know, it's like it goes to whoever. That's a terrible yeah. statistic. So that well, being true thing. means we're going to put another, let's say, hundred thousand people out of work. Okay, let's say ten percent of them go and do something, start a business, whatever. That's still ninety thousand people. So I'm glad we're going to cut red tape out to make America run more smoothly. Like Texas is great. I'll give Texas credit. There is no red tape. You come here. You want to. You want to do a business. You fill out two forms. You're done. You go do a business here. There's no red tape. That's perfect. Other states have tons of red tape. So if we're going to make America like Texas, where you can easily run a business and make money, that's a good thing. These people that you're going to get rid of, I'm hoping there's a plan. Not like, you know, he did when he got on Twitter one day or a Zoom call on Twitter and went, you're all fired. Okay, great. You, you do that to 100,000 so, people. So, so, so you're saying that in America in general, it's hard to find a job? Yeah, very. Everybody I know. So even, you, you have one answer why Trump won. No, Trump. That's no? not. That's not, it's not why Trump won. Um, economically, America right now is at an all-time everything. Like before he won the election, like yeah, but you said that up, it's hard with up. the jobs. It was hard when he was still president. And we had COVID. So nobody worked. You stayed home for two years and got a check. So after four years of Biden administration, listen. The problem, what's happening in America, in my opinion, is that because of automation. It's hard to find a job, even if you go to McDonald's where, you know, Mr. Trump worked for a day. Um, they're not they're not going to hire someone, let's say, David's age, because you're going to be like, oh, hey, you're yeah. too old. They want yeah. high school kids well, or they want whatever. Or they, so true. the problem is there are not enough jobs for the people that don't have jobs. So people have to come up creative ways. So that's why you see all these people trying to become influencers. Cause you're like, Ooh, if I can hit it big, I can, you know, I'll be a TikTok sensation or an Instagram sensation. That's is a very different mentality. To what it's it used interesting to be. That, that the name of this, the name of this particular episode we're doing is, um, was it bad in the good old days? Because it would appear that, um, I was reading some research over the weekend mm -hmm. that people above 45 uh, are considered by, you know, the people who are looking, who are offering jobs right. that, that, that they don't have, that they, they don't have the capacity to embrace, um, let's say, for instance, um, artificial intelligence, even if it's very basic <laughs> for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is, and, and they've surveyed all these, you know, all these companies that have been mm -hmm. looking uh, for, for jobs. This was done in, in, in the UK and it's done here in Europe as well. It's exactly the same. Yeah, they think, well, if you're 45 or above, you know, that's you, you lack the you lack the ability to learn. Now, what they did, what they also did was they found companies that had taken that risk, 45 plus, right. and they asked them anonymously then, could you tell us 
what their performance level was for the 45 plus against the, the people who just came out of the cradle. And they said, well, like twice as much. Yeah. The, you know, pe people were learning quicker. They were open to, uh, to new old ideas. School, old school people, old school people, I guess it's 45 or older now. We have a different mentality or at least my mentality. So when I, when I had to have like a gig and didn't run my own stuff, I'd be in the office at five, five thirty, sometimes four o'clock in the morning to get shit done. And then when the children came in at eight o'clock or, you know, eight to 10, cause God forbid they'd get there on time. I babysat until five o'clock or by three, cause they were all gone. And then I'd work till eight o'clock because you get your work done, say between 5 AM and 8 AM, you babysit the whole day. And then from five at night to eight at night, you get the rest of your work done. So yeah, my there's generation, a generation of people who want their work life balance and they yeah, consider you, they consider does, your slate. No, oh. they consider they consider your work ethic as as part of the enslavement that has been that has been. Then don't um, work like that. But then, when your company's not successful or you don't do things, then that's fine. But you can't blame it on anybody. Like if you're at a startup, you work a hundred hour work week. It's oh, really that simple. At least, at least. I mean, or if you're self employed, people, like Adam. Right, you know, that's but that's funny. my point, though. If you don't put in the time, things don't happen. And that's what they don't understand. So when I hire someone, we tell them what we expect. I don't expect you to work my hundred hours, but you have to work. If we need a phone, if we need to do a meeting on a Saturday or a Sunday, unless someone's dying or it's you're in church or synagogue or shul or whatever, then that's fine. But if we need to have a, a, a half hour quick dialogue, then you need to be on the phone. There's no Monday through Friday bullshit. You have to work. Well, it's banned, it's, isn't it? It's banned. It's banned in France. It's going to be banned in the UK. I'm sure. I'm, well, I don't think Trump no, will ban it here. But I'm just saying, but that's to me is the craziest thing in the world. It's like, that's why I'm just saying, let the AI overlords take over. Give everybody a million dollar a year salary and then call it a day then if that's what you want. You want to be lazy and lay around. I mean, I don't know. I, I The good old days to me, I like the, I like, I don't think they were bad. I, I like the fact that people had a work ethic. I like the fact that we actually had it. Okay. But the show is not about what was good in the good old days, but what was bad in the good, in the good old days. And, uh, I was, was reading that? yesterday. Yeah. And I was reading yesterday about, you know, the things that he is just planning to do uh, Trump right. and his right. administration. And one of the things that he's planning to do is to bring back to the school uh, the prayer. I don't know how much constitutional this is, but uh, I remember when when I, I was born in Poland, but Poland at the time was communist, so we didn't have prayers. You know, communists, right. they don't, they are not religious. We didn't have prayers in the school. But when I came to Greece and I was 10 years old, there was a prayer still for some yeah. years, I don't know, two right. years or something like that. So I, 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 I caught up with that. And I had uh, so. Right Right through into high school till I was I left high oh, school. Oh, okay. So you see, Trump and, and, is Trump. And hymns. That's what you would sing and have prayers. To start yeah. The day. Yeah. So, was a so, secular school. It wasn't a religious school I went to. It was a secular school. No, it wasn't my religious also school. It was normal yeah. school. But yeah. it, it, it was a part of the good old days. Now, the question is was it good? I don't think so. So why? this is a bar because uh, why do you have to impose religion to school? So let me, I let, mean, me just, let me play devil's advocate for a second. I don't care if the kids pray or not, because I don't think they know what they're praying to or for or whatever. And, you know, praying for peanut butter and jelly sandwich isn't going to really help you out. If the teacher said, if you have to have prayer in school and a kid doesn't want to pray, then don't pray. I mean, that's fine. I mean, Listen, if we're going yeah. to go back to the, we're going back to this, you know, to like the 18th century, we're going to become, you know, this Plymouth Rock Pilgrim Society, apparently, um, onward Christian soldiers type of stuff. Well, you've got and to rid of your money, haven't you? In God we trust. I mean, every time you, every time you buy a burger, in God oh, we God, trust. God, God told you to buy that burger, by the way. That's why it says oh, in yeah. God we trust. Oh. But if oh. somebody wants to pray in school, I don't give a shit. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect my life. If it makes them feel better, cool. I mean, what, are you alluding to, what are you alluding to there, Adam? Do you think that that's a bad thing then? That, yeah. That, 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 yeah, that, I think it's a bad it's thing. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a step, it's a step behind. I don't have, I am, I am a religious person, to be right. honest. 
I just don't follow any religion that I are known. I have my own religion, you can say. But I am a religious spiritual. Let's say spiritual. Okay. Because it's so, uh, so more you, wider. Uh, and how did you feel then at 10 years old then? Because you said you had you had nothing in Poland. Then you came to Greece, which we know is a very uh, orthodox, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that but, but look, look, uh, in Poland, there was a uh, uh, religious school, but we had to right. do it outside school. We had to go to the church. There were like classes with uh, pupils that, and we had like two hours every day, something like, I don't remember now, uh, or two or three times a week. I, I don't remember that, but we had classes, religious classes, but we had to go outside school. We had to go to, to so the regimes there they were, they were uh, allowing that because they knew that religion was a, important part of the society they just didn't want it in the school and i i thought it was okay well yeah. at that time i was very young so i i can't uh, say much because you know you just follow the rules that are uh, uh given to you right. but uh, if we start with this maybe then we make separation here are girls school classes only and here are boys classes only oh let's have a uniform again you know I, I, with all that you are good with all that i'm good with not just separating the boys from the girls and because you know you but i'm saying i'm good with uniforms i'm good with kids having discipline kids today have no discipline and they don't learn anything but uh, okay this, so I said, and I so imposing show last okay so imposing prayers um no prayer has I, nothing to do with it that's no discipline. So? that's just bullshit. i'm just saying uniform, i'm not against uniform. discipline myself but i'm saying I'd about those kids, things i'd rather have kids in uniforms we said this on well, I think lost our business club free. Friday. I said what I really would like to see, if you're gonna go back to whatever, I want to see kids get a real education. Not this crap yeah. they go in there, they learn absolutely nothing. Yeah. They know that I want kids to get an education. And the way you got an education when we all went to school is there was discipline. Okay, so, so let me ask you something else about well, let's go back, uh, you, go you go back to the school uniforms. That's a that's a very socialist I'm socialist okay with ideal. That. Put them in because, yeah, in, in Poland, I, I, we had uniforms, but they had also in Greece. Just before I came, when I yes. came, they uh, I, I went abolished to, I, had, I was in the school uniform from when I first went to the primary school till I left high school, and it was it was it was, a, it was designed certainly in the UK to be social engineering, because it was supposed to be uh, a way that people couldn't see your uh, your family's wealth or your family's poverty. At a child at, at a child level, because everybody had a uniform. That's that was the the the, the thinking behind it. Very very socialist way of looking at. It. What's wrong with that? I, I don't have I don't have an issue with it. I I hear this you know. That talking. was that was one of the uh, claims. <laughs> the other claim is to make them feel like soldiers. They are just uh, just just. Um, when you play chess, the smallest uh, piece, how it's and called. The pawns. The pawns. Yeah, the pawns. It's just like pawns. You're just a soldier. Yeah, okay. There's no difference. Okay. Because it's, it's against the human nature. We are not the same anyway. Anyway. So let me ask you this. The schools today are better or worse than we had back in the day? <laughs> Is that discussion every generation has? No, no, I'm just saying that we, there were no school shootings when I was a kid. I went to school. I didn't worry. About I, I, I can't school. say because I'm not in the school. I don't know how they operate now. But you went you to know. school. But when you went to school, no one tried to kill you. Oh, they but that somebody <laughs> tries to kill me in the school now. Well, so, now they try in America. Have you? Do you read the? We have a school shooting here every other day. And this is uh, what's the reason for that? Well, I think I'm. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure there's a video, list. Video games. Video, I mean, yeah, for video games. Yeah. No well, maybe, games. excuse me, I, I have another suggestion that we Europeans, we say it to the Americans. Well, we yeah. don't sell guns here in, in Greece, for example, in Europe. Right. So it's it's really, really hard to have a gun. Yeah, I agree it's, with that. It's, it's, like, it's, you know, we have this a, is, we have a we, right for that. Yeah, you have a we right have for that, but th this right has consequences. Well, then there you go. And we're okay with that, apparently, as Americans, because God forbid you take our guns away. So, so, so it's out of the question. The the, the question that you said that uh, there were, were killings. When, when I was a kid going to school, there were still guns, but no one was shooting each other at the school. Well, maybe the, the, the it's easier to get a gun now. 
Uh, I think it was easier back then to get a gun. Today, I think it's a little, supposedly a little harder. When I went to school, there were no metal detectors. I mean, they, we went to school in a cave, of course, and they drew on the wall with fire and sticks and chisels. But when I went to school, we didn't have metal detectors. You walked into school. You, you have metal down, detectors in the school? Stuff. In America? There, there's medical detectors My God. in the school. You have to walk every, there's one school in Broward County. There was a news report that everybody is late to class by 30 minutes to an hour because the line that wraps around because of the metal detectors is just huge. When I went to school, your mom or dad dropped you off or you went on the school bus, got off the bus or you got out of the car or you rode your bike, you walked into the school, you sat at your little desk and you did your lessons. And at the end of the day, you clicked at all your stuff and you went home. That's it. Okay. And you learned. You went home, you did your homework, you played with your friends and you're done. Today, kids go through what? You have to go through a metal detector. You have to worry about someone's trying to do this to you. You can't say this. You can't do that. The kids talk back to the teachers. I mean, there's videos all the time. About so you are saying wow. that this is a good thing that no, was back then good, and I it's like not. The old, I, I like the good old days when the teacher, if you talk back to your teacher, they took you down to the principal and the principal whacked your ass with a paddle. And oh, you know yeah. what? Are you Let's like that? To the teacher. I think that's okay. I have they no problem it. with any of that. Violence in school. Yeah. If you can uh, hit I, on the app, seriously, primary school, if, if you, if primary you, school, if, uh, how are you going to discipline a kid? This, yeah. we're going to be your friend bullshit doesn't seem to be working. You discipline the kid with uh, beating him. Yeah. Spanking you know, I had that, I had that, him? I had that at, at, uh, at that's primary not, school. But that's not violence. Which, which spanking, part? you don't believe in spanking. You, that's that's uh, not violence. No, spanking is not violence. Spanking what's, is, what's the definition oh, of violence to you? Uh, Russia invading the Ukraine, the Vietnam War, World War II. Beating, you cannot, beating up people, you cannot limit violence what? only to war. So I, when a, I when bag, a, when I when a parent snacks their child, Sorry, well, I guess they don't I, do that I, anymore. Is that violent? I, is that violent? I, I bag, I bag my and goes, boom. Yeah, of course, spanking is violent. No. Uh, not in bed uh, for, for couples, but uh, a, a child, if it's beat. Not beat there's, them. There's, no, there's a difference between beating and a spanking. If I spank your bum once, two. Okay, I, I ask you something else. Let's yeah. imagine the classical traditional American family back in the day. And when we say back in the day, we say 80s, right? 70s, 80s, no, something no, like that. No, no. Back when? in the day would be the 60s and the 70s, because in the 80s, the American family started to fall apart. In, in the 80s? Yeah, in the 80s. The beginning of the 80s is when the American family fell apart. Okay, so let's let's take 70s, for example, okay? okay let's take the 70s. Okay. In the uh, 1970s, I badmouthed the teacher, and I got thrown into the hallway. I just went in the hallway. My headmaster came along, and he said to me, why are you out here? And I had said, well, you know, I badmouthed the teacher. He said, right, I'll see you before you go home, because we lived about five minutes from school, before you go home to lunch. And I got three whacks on my uh, with a with a cane mm -hmm. across the back of my legs, just under my ass. And I got home and I was like, all oh, this and everything. And my mother said to me, "What happened?" And I told her. She said, "Let me have a look." She said, "Oh, okay. Well, you probably deserved it." There you go. What's wrong with that? Well, uh, look, there is. Uh, no. so, so, so you mean that was my question? Actually, I didn't finish it. Uh, do you think that uh, parents? were spanking let's say their children more back in the day or not yes. no back in the day they don't spank them anymore because they're afraid that someone's going to call social services and they're going to yeah. take them away I mean, like, you, you get get so, so when you were a child and you got spanked you yeah. liked it was, and you would say mm, i deserved it oh yeah i deserved oh, when i got it. spanked oh when i got let me put it this way when i got spanked a i deserved it and b Every Saturday night at eight o'clock, I had a date with my mom to get my mouth washed out with soap. Okay. So yes, I deserved it because I was not, I was a great student. I was a good child, very respectful, but there were moments, no. And if I did something wrong, I remember, and I would always joke with my mom, she would chase me around the dining room table with a wiffle ball bat, a plastic bat. And then she, you know, try to whack you and she'd be like, wait till your dad gets home, which was the worst. And your dad would go, Bump on the ass one time, it was done. And then on, on if I yeah. swore during the week on Saturday at eight o'clock, I had a date with my mom and I got my mouth washed out with brown soap. And you know, a couple of weeks of that, and I was like, quite sweet. Yeah. 
Well, it doesn't help since, though, of course. But no, 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 daily. It doesn't help. But well, I'm just saying, uh, uh, I got I spunk by discipline. There's no discipline today. Discipline. Well, I, I got I got spunk from yeah. my uh, father too, and okay. I wasn't I wasn't a revolutionary child, etc. But it was normal at the time, you know, to yeah. get spunk for everything like that. Yeah. You know, I, I was afraid of my father. There was time I was afraid of my That's father because be. I might. Why? You, I should be afraid of my parents. Your parent, your parents are not your friends. Your parents are your parents. Your parents yeah, I'm talking about fear. I'm talking home. about ch ch uh, children fear, child fear. I wasn't afraid of my. Fear. I wasn't afraid of my parents or my grandparents. Well, I was. I got spanked. But see, well, maybe you didn't. I, I was. Yeah, but I you're talking I, about two different things now because uh, it's like spanking. My mother would say to me, you know, she'd just say, "Well, I'll, I'll I wasn't I'll, spanked. I was beaten. I was beaten." There's a yeah, difference between banking, uh, well, banking so, and banking. So, so where, where are the limits? Because like sometimes, if somebody goes wait, boom, boom. wait, wait, wait. When right. you live in a society, when spanking is not violence, well, right. a little more spanking or maybe a little more spanking is also not a violence. No. Because he deserved it. Because well, depending probably. on the bad thing that he did, yeah. which is totally, I mean, it's subjective. It's, uh, I don't know. And uh, the parent who had a bad day, I don't know, with his uh, work or maybe with his uh, uh, wife or something like that, yeah, yeah. got all his, you know, bad energy and all this crap that he had in his uh, psyche uh, towards his child because that was happening also. That's abuse. I mean, That's abuse. That's different. Well, I think abuse starts from spanking. <laughs> I, well, I mean, my parents, my parents never abused me when I. Got you spanked. often, you often, you know, generalize something that comes from your life. I'm talking about generalizing. I'm talking about very. I I know my childhood. I didn't get abused. Yeah, you I know your childhood, abused. but you don't know others other childhoods. But I'm not worried. I don't. You don't know my childhood. I, I I understand that, but that's not the point. The point is, there's a difference between discipline and giving somebody a spanking, one two, or a smack. Or whatever it might be. Do you mean that all yeah. families now they don't have disciplines with their children? They don't discipline Correct. their children. None. 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 That's why you see the problems you have with these kids today. Well, I None. know a lot of families that I know that there are disciplined without any spanking, without any violence. Even look, violence is not only spanking, not only you know clapping or something. It's also voice. It's also shouting at your child all the time. That's not My violence. father was shouting. Of course, it's violence. Not violent. Of course it's violent. Stop. Of course it's violence. You, Stephen, Stephen, you have not lived my childhood. You don't know how much my. That. So let me tell you that my father, when he right. was mad, he was shouting so loud, so much, so that I was afraid of him. Is not this not violence? It's fucking violence, and I have psychological problems with that now. Still, after a psychologist, after working with myself a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm a guy who is very open into and still have problems into dealing with it. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people who have the same and worse problem because of that childhood, of that discipline, you know, uh, way of uh, getting the children to the right way. You see, I have a problem with all of that. Not you or anybody else. I was raised in the Northeast. I'm from New York. Everybody screams and yells at each other. That's how you say good morning. So when you get screamed or yelled at from somebody, you're like, okay. And when they're done, it's over. The problem is, is that this is why you, this is what's happening. Everyone's trying to coddle these kids. The kids can't handle it. If you tell someone nowadays, your work is terrible. You bullied me. You don't like grow a fucking pair of balls. This is the problem. Nobody's a, nobody tells their children no. that they suck at something because they're afraid. And if you know what, if your mom or dad yells at you because you did something wrong, then when they're done, they still love you. It's not whatever. Everybody handles it differently. The problem is, is that we we're making this generation of children a bunch of little pussies and they can't handle everything. They think they're. What special. do you mean, pussy? What do you mean, pussy? What do you they're mean, weak. pussy? Pussy is a nice mentally, thing. Mentally weak. I, I love weak. pussies. I don't know if you don't they're like pussies. pussies. I like pussies. It's a hey, it's an old school term. Get used to it. Look it up. Uh, yeah, but it's a symbol. It's a symbol because all day the women are the weak part. That's why they are calling the pussies and not dicks. Right. So, but the but they're becoming. We have a society of a bunch of mamby pambies, male and female. I don't and understand actually, this. What you're saying, actually. All right, pussies. 
they men are pussies. There's no men anymore. No one's. What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a man? What What do we have to do to be a man? Uh, we have to be penis. hard. We have to be. Well, okay. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you have to have a penis. Let's start with that. So the transgender thing will put yeah. aside for a while. If you have to have a penis, that's number one to be a man. Number two. You have to understand the old school ways. You have to know how to be a gentleman. You don't have to have to treat people with respect. You have to know how to treat a woman with respect, whether they want it or not, because the women's lib crap is all crap. This woke stuff, nobody cares anymore, which is proven by Mr. Trump winning. So the thing is, is that we're not raising gentlemen and we're not raising young ladies. We're raising a society of entitled little mamby-pamby pussies. And if you don't like the word pussies, replace it with something else weak human beings, but we're not building a, a Replace it with something else strong. so that I can understand better because I don't like the term pussy. Pussy is a nice thing for me. Yeah, Very nice, a nice thing. thing for everybody. So, so, but my point there is- are people, There are people, there are people who term. are weak. Some people are weak, some other whole, are not our weak. Our whole society it, it, in America is weak. Our whole society here is weak. Don't, okay, not, so not make really America nice. great again means also this, that uh, stop I think, being I think pussy. So. It does. Yes, I think it, Donald right. Trump wants to toughen up America. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry. Well, you only have to worry about if you're a pussy then with Trump in power is that he's going to come and grab it. He's going to grab it. To he's going to grab a lot of it, which is good. He's going to grab a lot so of it. I'll make America but I mean, great. I, I don't know. I mean, it would be interesting to see whether or not uh, Trump... Uh, Mr. Trump, as it is now, or the president elect, I should, I should say, as to yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, what's going to happen to woke? Is that all going to go out of the window? Is that, is that going to be like, we'll, we'll look back in four or five years' time, be like the COVID thing? Oh, it happened. It was just like a, a wave. Woke is dead. Woke is dead. I hate to tell woke you that. Dead. There was I, I was listening to a commentary guy on Bloomberg the other day, and after Trump won. And, and I just read all the vote stuff. They basically said that people are tired with this woke political correct crap. And they really do want, which is what I keep saying, the old school, old ways, enough about I hurt your, I don't give a shit about your feelings. If I'm in a business meeting and I say something that you don't like, too bad. Grow a pair of balls, take it like a man or a woman, and we move on. Well, you don't sound like respecting somebody like this. <laughs> if no, you don't give a shit. In business, I respect you, but if you screw up and I have to tell you you screwed up, or if I'm having a disagreement with you, I should be able to disagree with you without worrying about your little sensitive feelings because I don't give a shit. Because there's money involved, there's businesses involved, there's people, taxes, government, laws. I don't care if I hurt your feelings if you're an idiot. Maybe that's the problem it's now that it's everything it's material. That no, every, that, like that, a kid. Just no, that Adam, what matters the most now is money, just money, material. In God we trust. That's why only that's yeah, it's always been money. Ah, that's that is that is uh, hypocritical. Yeah, well, it's, it's, so. that's the only thing that Trump seems to be. I don't think that that now. that God likes that we have become slaves and we worship money and material. I don't think yeah. that he likes it. He she likes why, it. Why, it. Why would it be? Why would why would that not be a, a likable thing then? What's the issue there? Why should why should you not like money? Say say the question again because is it a question? So, well, do you, why you said you like you, money. Why would you not like money? Because um, look, it's it's not, it's a tool. I'm not defend. I'm not defending it. I'm just uh, yeah yeah yeah. Oh, it's okay. But uh, look. Uh, what is objective in our life? Uh, our objectives. Uh, now comparing the society back in the day and now, what I see one of the differences is that we have become more materialist than we were used to be, and uh, uh, you can I see people like. I can't you necessarily can see agree with that because are we not on this journey? Journey, excuse me, journey of materialism. We are where we are today because we wanted it yesterday as well. And the day before that, it's not like it's like all of a sudden you wake up one morning and we're all materialistic. No, it's slowly. It it, it happens slowly. Yeah. So so that would have been then in in the old days, the good old days, materialism and, and the want for money would be just surely just as strong, but maybe not as obvious because we're not sharing every fart and every meal that we make on Instagram. Uh, at, you know, every moment of our lives. It's starting with the Reagan era. Your materialism, right? Because greed is good. Gordon. I don't think that we were. 
I, I don't think that materi materialism was the, the same, the same, at, the same, the same level at uh, that time. There were yeah. other things that were also very meaningful to us. Right. Besides the materia, let's call it money, materia. Like, anyway. like in the 80s, what was what, in America? What do you think was meaningful to us? Tell me what you think America was like in the 80s. I don't know. I haven't been to America. I'm speaking generally uh, okay. from well, my so point America, of view. America in the 80s. Well, I, I tell you that, for example, uh, friendship was quite very strong at that time. It's not that strong anymore. For right. example, uh, when uh, internet came, it was uh, supposed to bring us closer. Yeah, that's why. Do you remember Nokia, the the, the yeah, firm Nokia. that collapsed finally? Nokia, yeah, mm -hmm. from from Finland. Uh, one of their uh, main like uh, advertisement, you know, uh, slogans was uh, connecting people. Mm -hmm. So we have got this technology. We got the internet. We've got messengers, WhatsApp. Do we communicate more and deeper than we used to be? We used no. to do. Well, no, well, we you communicate see? more. Whether or not it's deeper, I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah. exactly. I spent yeah. I spent Friday evening listening to a whole lot of Gen of Gen, of Gen Zs talking about the fact that young people were always on their phones, and they were sharing that issue with me by showing me things on their phone. And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you just think, okay, yeah. You know, it's, well, and they say, well, you know, all these kids are going to school now. They're all becoming short-sighted. There's there's a, some sort of muscle in the back of the neck which is enlarged on a lot of younger people. It's now it's now a physical thing because they're like this all the time. Yeah, looking at their phones. So yeah, yeah, the problems with the eyes. They are hey, communicating, just, but but just you so know, you know, is it? Dawn, our 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 fan, our only fan, by the way, Dawn said that her ne her parents <laughs> never spanked. I never got spanked by my teacher. Um, my parents always put the fear into me. So, and Dawn, I said, how old? Because she said, I said, different generation. And Dawn said, no, same generation. We're all the, we're all about the same age. So she says that, I said, how old do you think we all are? She said, you guys are between 50 and 65. So I said, it's a good guess. Unfortunately, Adam's yeah. in his 40s. Um, yeah. So and I No, said, I'm, I'm 52. Right, are you really? Oh, okay, good Yeah, guess. you don't I, know? I, 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 I thought you were in your 40s. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm 52. Yeah. And I, and I'm no, you always, told us, so you always told us you were 40 something. Yeah, you always told no. us you were 40s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have my uh, the birth the year everywhere. I don't oh, care. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So Dawn was I just she look young all, because all I like pussies. I don't spunk anybody. She, I I'm a positive she, thinking. She got she got her she got her ages right. She said fifty between sixty five. I said, well, David's really seventy three, but don't worry about that. So anyway, um, no, are you seventy three, David? You're seventy three. He's eighty. No, I'm, he's really eighty. No, I'm sixty seven. Got close enough. No, that's. Yeah, I thought you were sixty. I thought I never thought about your ages. Okay, I'll do this just, just as a parenthesis. <laughs> I thought you are about sixty two, David, and wow. I thought that Stephen is like fifty nine. I don't know. So I'm 35. And I just look old because I work 59. <laughs> you can't be younger than me. But how, how old are you? 62. No, we are not a 72 yeah. class. Yeah, yeah, he is 62. I am. I was born in the 60s. Ah, 62. You said yeah. 52. Yeah. No? no? 62. No. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, you guys, we all look younger here. <laughs> we do. We do. And you know why? Well, it's, it's all, not it's for us to say, is it? You know, it's, it's our fans all, uh, think we look younger. We, in fact, on the yeah. cigar show Saturday, one of the guys on the cigar show said, "I said something." He goes, "You're not that old. You're like 50. And I'm like, "We'll stay with that." So yeah, there you that. go. But I'll, anyway, I'll, I'll have that. Put that one away. I'll, I'll have that. But my point is, is, so back in the 80s, when Reagan um, became Ronald president Reagan. And, and greed became good, that's kind of when America went to more materialistic, and that's when you saw you know CEOs go from making maybe a million dollars a year to making like a hundred million dollars a year and bankers and whatnot. Right. So that was the era that started. And then I think when the internet came in and then you got, if you will, reality TV, thank you, Kardashians and all these people and influencers are like renting jets at, you know, 500 bucks an hour to say, look at my jet when it's not their jet. Now everybody's striving to have more of whatever, you know, yeah. and I, I mean, think it's an argument, see, it's an argument, see Elon Musk. Yeah, there's an well, argument for MTV uh, uh, start kicking it all off, uh, literally, because um, 
you know, because for the first time, generations of people across the globe could look at look at different lifestyles, and right. they were all very poppy or you know very rich, right. you know. Um, what really, what really kicked it off wasn't really MTV. What really kicked it off in the '80s, there was an, a writer, a TV writer, and actor strike, and they did reality shows on all the major networks here. And there was an article in the Wall Street Journal, and I never forgot it. And they said, we, uh, after the strike ended, they it was said, a strike this is great. Then. No, 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 no. Let, me, strike, let, me, let, me fin- let me finish. Let me finish. The article, the guy was talking to an executive at NBC, and the guy at NBC said, we did these reality shows, and we love them. And the guy was like, well, why do you like reality shows? And he's like, he said, we pay a tenth of what we have to pay for a television series, and we make a hundred times more. Yeah. And there's no residuals. So... The reality TV, if you will, even though it's staged more than reality, became a way for them to produce something fast and quick, non-scripted, for lack of a better term, and make a ton of money. And that, I think, is yeah. what became your thing. Because then it's like, oh, we can do this. We can do that. To your point, let's take someone, you know, America's Great Race or The Amazing Race. We'll take you around the world and show. So all of a sudden... That's, I think, what happened, and I think so. That's so what part was the of first one. What was are. the first reality show then? Uh, he, this your life back in the fifties, I'm assuming. Yeah, you know, but that's uh, that's not to to the modern era of today. The modern era of today, um, you got the housewives of this, the realtors of that, uh, the like the the Bachelor, the Bachelorette, every talent show. You know, before yeah. America got talent and. Um, American also talent shows on TV. Yeah, but before that, Ed McMahon had one here um, called Star Search. And that's where you got Rosie O'Donnell and this one singer, I can't remember his name, but there's no infrastructure back then to promote them. So yeah. Star Search was the first, if you will, in, in that respect. I'm sure there were others before. Game, so, I mean, so if you look at this, what this has become now is it's just like, we're just going to tell you that if you don't have... I'm being somewhat stupid here. 57 supercars in a garage, four private jets and a big house somewhere. You're yeah, not- you're a loser. That's- right. So that everyone's trying to strive to become something. And it's really just be the best you. But this all goes back to discipline, grounding, and your parents teaching you this is – What's do, important? This wasn't is not important. So if you're do, do you remember? Case, do you remember the the film uh, A Dead Poet Society? Yes, Robin Williams and uh, yeah, yeah, Robin yeah, yeah, yeah. This is for me feeling. what I uh, one of the aspects of the bad that was in the good old days. Okay, uh, like a patriarch uh, society where uh, uh, parents would tell you, no, you will study this. Yeah. in your life where uh the women uh were uh you know in the corner they are just meant to be m- mothers and no uh and this is actually what ma- what uh, caused the the walk uh, uh movement which of course became exaggerated i agree with that right but uh, there was a reason for the walk movement in general and that was one of the reasons also the back in the day uh, the racism was stronger, I think, right? No? I don't know if the races were stronger. I think back in the day, my like I grew up in a, a, a society and my family, right? The women were just as strong as the men. They were involved in business. They did this. It wasn't like you're a woman, you get pregnant and sit in a corner. The women were actively involved in the family. Yeah, but business. we're talking about all the families, as far as yeah, we but, know. But, but, and we remember. But, but in yeah, but in Europe and stuff, women were actively involved with the family businesses there in other countries. Just because we well, are, you'd a, be surprised, uh, Stephen. It didn't, I mean, women did, didn't have any not in Greece in I mean, until the six until the sixties. Which is well, that's when they were burning their bras. Thanks to the Gloria Steinem, we were having the women's right and ERA and all that. Helen Reddy was like, "You are a woman." I got all that, but I think once again it goes back to how you're raised. And I think if you're raised, listen, I I was raised that men and women equal can do the same job, just as smart, blah, 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 blah. And that's, and okay, that's how, and that, to me, it's the same with color. It doesn't matter what color your skin is, what religion you are, what sex you are, you're a human being, go. And that's how I was raised. But we don't teach people that anymore. 
We we separate. Well, we I, have, I, ser yeah. I certainly wasn't raised that way because my father was very traditional, was ex-military. Right. Um, yeah, mine too. And, so, and, and, my, and my mother was a professional housewife, and she loved it. And that's the, right. And that's, that's yeah, the, mine too. The, yeah, that's the gig that she had with my father, and they were both happy. Um, but you know, uh, the older I get, the more I realise that, uh, as you say, you know, regardless of, of what sexual orientation you have. You know what religion you have. It's about the best person for the, that the job that has to be done. Correct. And the rest is totally irrelevant. And you're actually doing yourself a disservice by saying, "Oh, it has to be a woman, or it has to be somebody who's white, or it has to be right. black, or pink, or orange." You know, because you're just boxing yourself in. You, you're giving yourself, you know, more of a chance to fail than to win. And I never, I never understood that in business either. I mean, why if somebody? comes and you know is absolutely cracking at what they're doing you know like a real a real top person and they're 20 right. and pink or yellow or, or green in color you know and i'll say oh no i'm right. afraid i'm only it's only you only have to be black or white to come and work for me how stupid would that be well it's the same with age we just discussed that earlier right if you over, yeah, over yeah. It's like 45 you can do anything and it's really funny because everybody i know over 45 knows more more embraces technology and uses it better than everybody under 45 yeah. like, that's, oh, 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 that, that's oh, oh. now that's now been proven their report you should right. check it out reports on that. No, no but that's my point so we have all these hiring idiots and we have they use ai so if you have a cv that's longer than a page i guess they can't read it because they're like oh you have too much experience too much really i remember the last gig i had before i started my own little family office stuff i remember somebody said something to me and i've got i literally said to them because they were like maybe 15. i said i've done more in, in one day in my life than you've done in your whole business career and they just yeah. looked at me and go, there's nothing someone's going to throw at me that I have not done, handled, or can't handle, and I know how to get things done on a global basis. And I mean, I took their company from nothing to huge, but I laughed about that because here's somebody that can't even masturbate. Like, they have no clue, right? They've never been anywhere, well, and they want to grow a global not. company, and they want to grow a global company. And I'm like, and I literally said, what have you done globally? And they're like, well, no. I'm like, so you think that because back then I guess I was 50 something. I said, do you think because I have experience, I, I said, I will outwork you, out fuck you and out drink you. And I said, any day. And I was like, I don't even give a fuck if I got the job. And I just like, have a nice day. And two days later, they offered me the gig. I was like, seriously. And I took them from a nothing company to this big mega thing. And I laughed the whole time thinking, do you didn't even want to talk to me because you thought I couldn't keep up. And they couldn't keep up with me. Like my team was people of age, all over 45, if you will, because apparently that's the old age now. And they outdid all the little 20 and 30 year olds. They were there earlier. They worked later. They worked harder and smarter. And what would take normal people six months to a year to do, they did in like two or three months because they knew. Well, I was, uh, I was very critical. I worked for a, an international recruitment company. I was very critical at the beginning, but about this age thing because then i was just coming up to my 60th and i before then um you know people say oh you've got too much experience and i've told this story right. before you know and i used to go to the supermarket and they used to say you know like, like that's like uh, you know 25 euros for your shopping i said don't worry about that i'll pay with my i'll pay with my experience you right. know and they said i'm sorry we only accept euros so so you know so, <laughs> what, so, so, so what's my experience worth then did it would say yeah. absolutely nothing Right. But the problem is that it comes to the people who want to employ. They, they these these companies all think they're young. Even if their chairman is eighty three, yeah. they all think that they're young and dynamic. So yeah. what they do is they say to the recruitment company, "We want young and dynamic people. They have to be no older than twenty five. They right. have, to have at least twenty years experience, <laughs> and and they can play football uh, on the football table on a on a Friday." Right. You know, when we have our, our, our drinky do's and we go out and, and bonding parties and all the rest of it. And and so the, in many respects, the recruiters are kind of boxed in by that. And what happens is they get a pile of stuff that comes in and they literally have to go. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Because the client. They can only it's ask if the client. Yeah, but you can't say that to the client. What they what the problem is, is they say. After the client still has the, the the job application open for, you know, two months, two and a half months, three months, then they're sort of kind of listening. Oh, yeah, well, maybe we have to broaden our portfolio. Right. 
and, and of I course, think... when you've got lots of people looking for work, that's easy to fill. But when things get not tight... Really. Not if you want someone who knows how to do the job. That's the yeah. problem, is that we? the problem is now that people are living longer, and now we're going to live to 100 or 120, and people think, oh, for, you're saying 45 is the number. Really? It better be 90 as old now, because if not, then the government better start giving Social Security out at 45, and I'm talking full benefits, Medicare, everything, if no one's going to hire you after that, because yeah. – you're going to have, there's going to be a point, and I keep saying this, and no one's listening. I'm sure they'll play this back in 100 years ago. Oh, you know what he's saying? At some point, people are going to be like, I've had enough. And you don't want, the, you know, people to go, I've had enough, because we see what happens when that ha when they say that. So we're just going to find out now for all this pussy generation. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe the thing with Trump was that too, that people had enough. I think Trump spoke a rhetoric that people like they don't understand economy eco economics so they don't understand what a tariff means all they know is they china he said i'm gonna tax china 200 percent people are like yeah they don't realize that this cost a dollar and now that he's gonna add the tariff it now costs you five dollars they don't get they don't understand that no. that's fine um and but and it may or may not help i don't think so I understand the Mexico they want. He's get, and he wants to deport 11 million people. That's great. Feel free. I, I saw the we saw the internment camps back in you know uh, the 40s with the Japanese. If that's what you want to do, figure it out. Good luck with that. So if we're going to become isolationists again, like we did in the 30s before World War II with Roosevelt, that's fine. But then have a plan for the 300 plus or whatever I will say 300 million people left after you get into deporting everybody. 300 million people left. And what you're going to do for jobs? I know you want to see, you. You think you're bringing everything back to America? Maybe a lot of American companies yeah. are going to be like, "No, we're good." There's a whole planet out there that buys our stuff. You know, India, China, they can go through. So, so him threatening a company, going, "If you don't build it in America, I'm going to tariff you." And but a lot of them are like, "Yeah, okay." So yeah, I don't. The other thing is, Stephen, like, is that you know, he's only got four. You've only got four years to build that to build that factory. To put that distribution uh, uh, chain well, in place. Well, that yeah. technically, it's not that hard because there's a lot of vacant. If you really, if if you really think about it, there's a lot of Detroit that's just a bunch of empty buildings. They, I don't think they've destroyed old factories that you can retool. Yeah. It probably doesn't take four years. I've literally watched the um, the Tesla Giga plant go up like almost overnight. I don't know if it's operational, but it's like built and done, and it yeah. and, you know does its thing. So. I don't think, it, you know, if we go back to the old American know-how, the way it used to be, not this bureaucracy, not this I'm lazy and it takes 42 people to turn on the electric. If we go back to the way it used to be where America says, I can get it done and I can get it done tomorrow, the attitude that got him to the moon or not, depending on what you believe, then no. Then theoretically, you can build and tool up a plant in a year. So in that respect, if we're cutting out all the BS and bureaucracy, I'm good with that. However, you think that now it's more bureaucracy than it used to be? Oh my God! Yeah, yes. Are yeah. you kidding? If it's you want to masturbate in America, more. you have to fill out six forms. So this is three percent more than, than when Trump was in power last time. Well, Democrats. no, you start, and he's talking. You know, you're talking people. I'm talking actual bureaucracy to get something. I don't care less if there's two people or fifty people. You're going to bureaucracy with one person. The problem in America is is that to get something done here, you have to go to agency A. And then after you fill out agency A, 17 different forms, and if you fill out one wrong, then you have to redo it all over. You go to agency B. Yeah, and you're done doing the their here. stuff. Then you go to agency C. Yeah. And then D, E, F, and G. So Musk's point is let's streamline everything, which is what Texas did um, to get businesses to come from all over the United States. What Texas said was, listen, if you want to open a business here, you fill out this piece of paper, and then we're going to take it to wherever you need to go, and you're done. And people are like, okay, so, but if you want to do the same business, let's say in California, parts of New York, Miami, or I should say Florida, other places, all of a sudden that one piece of paper now is 17 different pieces of paper in three different agencies. So it takes a while. So what Texas, in, in whether you agree with the governor or don't, and his people, is they streamlined a the process. Excellent. So if we're going to streamline in America to make things grow quick and boom, 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 and get it back to like America, where everyone has a job and everybody can live and there's not that much poverty and we have health care and blah, 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 blah. That's what I'm for. 
and not for all the other BS that everybody keeps saying. That gets me nervous because in four years, if the orange man doesn't leave, then that's a, that's a whole, that's a different country. But I am for, let's streamline it. I'm, listen, I'm not, I may not be a cheerleader for crypto algorithms. I'm thrilled to death that it's got a bump. I'm glad it's at 81,000. But see, Trump owns a trading company and has his own cryptocurrency. Beauty. Yeah, and Musk, so and Musk has seen his own token gone through the river. And, and that's well. fine. But now the regulation will now be in place that other people and other companies now can start tokenizing, having their own platform. I mean, it now will get us to a point where before, for the last, say, eight, 10 years, we've been sitting here looking around the room going, oh, that's nice. So now we have a path forward. So on some of the paths forward, I like it. Other things will worry me, but that's okay. I'm hopefully I'm proven wrong. But if not, it'll be like, yeah, I told you so. And if, but the economy and the Trump bump, and if Musk really can do it without like putting, you know, 12 million people into poverty, great. But I want to see a plan and still, I don't really see a, I hear the rhetoric. I've read their policies. I want to see a plan now and how you're going to implement it. I want to see the roadmap. And I, and I haven't seen in the roadmap. And I also- So they didn't have a plan after all, well, <laughs> like the Democrats. Right. There well, was the no Democrats plan were, from the, both sides. The Democrats, <laughs> the Democrats had no plan at all. They were just saying, you know, democracy. Yeah, that's great. But what about all this other stuff? No, I, mean, I think they, they had a plan. We continue what Biden started. And... No, no, no. Camilla Harris was changing it, but she never really spoke about it, which if you read her economic plan was totally different than Biden's. Well, maybe, maybe he didn't, she didn't have the time because she came late to the race. She had the time. She just had her head up her ass. Listen, and the Republicans ran a better thing. I don't think she had, I don't think she had the cojones to say, look, um, it's me now. You know, Joe's finished. It's me, and this is yeah. what I'm going to do going forward. And I think if she'd have done, I think if she'd have done that, that may well have helped a long way. That she would d d d distance herself from Biden. You mean? No, nah, she didn't do it far. Yeah, she was. She was. Yeah, she was just too nice. You know, it, uh, and she, she just said, "Okay, look, it was him. Now it's me." Yeah. And um, and I'm a different politician. She, she was too pussy. Thank you very much. I rest my case. <laughs> so, so, listen, you know what? You know what? She, she would on our show. If she would have come on our show, she would have won. But anyway, um, the Republicans at least they, they their plan may be fuzzy, and some of it's in some of it's not fuzzy. Some of it is. But at least, even now, I'm not an Elon Musk fan, right? I, I could care less about Elon. I'm, I, you know, it is what it is. But at least he says, I think we need to cut out two trillion and blah 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 blah. Now. I'm glad you think you're going to do all this. What's your plan? Now, if you're saying you're going to cut Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, then you better figure out how you're going to take care about all the people who put money into that, that are now getting to retirement age, that are going to want their money. Because if not, you're going to have a lot of people come after you. Um, and that's going to be an issue. So how are you going to cut it? And then as you cut things, how do you make it better? So no one's said that yet. I've read an article in the Financial Times about all these hatchet men and what they do and firing people. That's great. But now what are you going to do to make it better? You can't run it like your Twitter because your Twitter is losing money. Your GigaPlan, I don't know what the hell it's doing. Um, your Cybertruck's made like crap. So what are you going to do then? You're going to cut all this stuff. How are you going to make America great again or make it better? What are you going to do to move us forward other than reduce our Just talk. trillion dollar? Yeah, yeah, just talk. That's my point. Yeah. But just talk. And after four years, they would say, look, we made America great again. But where yeah, is it? No, uh, don't you is, see? Don't you see that we are great easy. again now? It's easy to talk the talk. We want him now to walk. Exactly. The That's the difference. And, and, it's, and, the, and the problem is we have such a bureaucracy. And then Trump has his, um, his Schedule F or whatever it's called, where he can get rid of federal employees. That's fine. But I still go back to it's, if you need to get rid of 10,000 federal employees or 100,000, whatever the magic number is, fine. What are we going to do with them? Because now they're displaced and we have to figure out that. And, uh, you know, like, not hey, well, what do we do? And B, when we, before we get rid of them, have we figured out how to streamline it from A to Z? Or is it going to be like, well, there's nobody at B, C, D, E, F, and G. So if you go from A and it just sits there now, how do you streamline it type of thing? It's, that's what, what, what does it mean, streamline? I don't understand uh, the term. How do, you, how do you make things go quicker, faster, or more efficient? Oh, okay. Better? Right. Yeah. That type of it's right. easy. It's easy to say we don't like it, and this is what right. we would do about it. 
but uh, I think what Steve's alluding to is, you know, the journey in between those two remarks. Yeah. And uh, there was, uh, it was an interesting, I was listening to some of the weekend and he said, he was talking about Elon Musk. He said, now, finally, finally, uh, uh, Donald Trump's got a brain and the brain's called Elon Musk. So, um, yeah. that's, that's, that's if you're an Elon that's Musk about, fan. If you're not an Elon Musk yeah. fan, that's not really true. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a match made in heaven. Yeah, but but what I know because I also because we, we read all the time now, you know, those guys who won, etc. And there was this uh, vice president, Vance. He was saying the that GD because Vance. Europe, yeah, Europe is going to, uh, you know, uh, try to regulate a little uh, the social media and also the X from Elon Musk. And he said this and this, if he, Europe uh, will try to regulate X, we will see what will happen with NATO. Look how they. Um, how 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 they protect him? They are uh, like it's more important X for them than NATO. Well, Brazil already threw X out, so I mean it doesn't. Listen, no, no, NATO, I hate to, to say this. I hate to say this. I don't think, and I, I said this on the show the other day, the Lost Dollar Business Club. The guy who is from the State Department, that's part of the transition team, is for America to stay in NATO. He, he says we should still be part of NATO. Trump and his group are saying we're going to leave or we're going to do whatever. That's fine. The people for right now that are like the adults in the room are saying, you know, we should probably stay. To Trump's point, they still need to write. They have to write checks. Oh, I agree. Write the checks. We shouldn't support the world like enough of that. Um, but if they pull from NATO, I think NATO is concerned that they actually now have to put their big boy pants on. And if Russia does decide to roll into the Ukraine, NATO is actually going to have to defend it because I think we got Poland and everybody on the border. And some of those are NATO countries. They're actually going to have to go to war without America, which is kind of what happened in World War II. And then, you know, when the Japanese got mad because they didn't get good service in Hawaii, we went, we went to war. So it's the same type of thing. You know, it's going to be very interesting to see. There's too many people in America that if Russia attracts the Ukraine, they're going to be like, it's horrible. It's terrible. We don't care. They start rolling into Poland and other countries, then all of a sudden it's going to be like, uh, what are we going to do? So it's interesting. So we'll have to see how that plays itself out. The same thing that's going on in the Middle East. Trump told Netanyahu to end the conflict before he takes office. I mean, you know, that's a bold, that's a big, bold statement that, you know, there's only one or two ways it's going to yeah. end. And, and well, he's all, he, just kicked uh, out Trump also has, a, has a, uh, um, a general that worked for him before, and he said, um, you know, the, way, the only way Israel is going to enter war is to, is to go in big and hard now. Yeah. Well, they know and, that. Uh, That's what that Nanu has wanted to do since day one. This yeah. is not like a shocker to anybody that follows this region. Everybody knows that's what he's going to do. And Qatar has asked Hamas to leave uh, Qatar the other day. They're like, we can't help you anymore. You're done. Get out. Yeah, well, so, he was, they, were, they were pissed off with both sides. Uh, they said that, that neither side neither side were, were wanted to talk about peace. So Fine. Hamas and uh, Hamas and Israel, and of course Net Netanyahu. If he once the war's finished, he's going to go to prison. He's not going to go to prison for the war. He's going to go to prison for all the naughty things he did before the war started. But why do you say an acting prime minister in a war situation? Then because the, the the prosecution towards him stopped on the day uh, that uh, that the war started. Oh, there so you go. It's, war is good. So yeah, yeah, war is good. Yeah, war is great. For well, some, for the well, most not for everybody, you know, the defense, the people in defense stocks make everyone makes money at war. War is a wonderful thing. Strange no, not it. everybody. Yeah. Most are not doing money, they are losing lives. Yes, I know. I'm being a smart ass. So, yeah, I, I only, the, only the military companies are making money, yeah. oh, and some yeah. other maybe, yeah. but okay. Be a group of people on this planet who says, Who cares? Well, and can I, and here's the well, a lot of people there's care. A, I think most care, but uh, what can they do? That's what there's, they are there's claiming. A book that, there's a book that I tout that I read last year. It's called The World. Just That's the title, The World. It's a big, red, thick book about yay thick. And it talks about the world from the beginning to now. And it talks about literally conflict. And all every every is a story about the population and conflict, which are just wars. And it's fascinating. We've been fighting and killing for land for stupid stuff since day one. Yeah. And yeah. so that's just our nature. 
So it's like, all right, let's just get Oh, I don't think so, because our nature is changing all the time. The only constant is change. No, but I, I will think, tell I you what is for me the worst thing, uh, in my opinion, which not yeah. has been spoken much about it. But this is my uh, my belief that with the uh, Trump uh, administration, I think that the climate change, that's the biggest. Oh, the top 20, and, uh, 29, yeah. And uh, well, we are, we are, America's we've been saying America. crazy stuff. You, you saw what happened in Valencia, right? In Spain. Mm -hmm. We're talking about more than 200 people dead and damages more than 10 billion of euros. We are going to pay for the climate change. We're going to pay more and more and more and with lives, with uh, destruction and with pain a lot. And that guy doesn't believe in that. So That's fine. we're well, going to pay for it. that. Ironically, more it costs more money in places like Bangladesh and in India and Pakistan. More people lose their lives through climate issues. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the whole of the middle of Africa is 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 in drought, and they're all moving north towards towards uh, Europe. Yeah, I mean, really, two hundred people. I mean, I'm, I don't want to sound callous about it, but just is it just because it's Spain and because we've all been on holiday that we kind of have an affinity towards it? Climate change has been happening all around us for years and years and years, and yeah, yeah but not at this uh, pace, not at this speed. That's the problem. Yeah. That yeah. we have seen, we have seen the changes during our lives, and we're still young. I mean, that's something. Yeah. The, the, the climate did not change, except of some big events like the big. The meteorite that hit Earth when there were six, 66 million yeah, years just, ago, there's, when there's, there were dinosaurs. That's a, in Indonesia. In Indonesia, there's just an, um, uh, a volcano now exploding. Krakatoa, when it was eighteen something or other, when that when that when that went kaboom, I mean, they, they could hear that in Portugal. There's reports of people writing down the sound of the of this sound wave that came all the way across the planet. The whole world went into a nuclear winter because of that. So a volcano. Yeah, yeah, it happened. It happened so, in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's also could, true. A volcano could change yeah. uh, the climate tomorrow. Yeah, but what? Why? Why make it more? Uh, you know, of a problem by our. Uh, you know, just thinking. Oh, well, it was always changing. Why not make more money? Just uh, just like that. Because this is all about. Yeah, it's it's, it's still about money, you know. It's about it's material. Plenty, plenty millions and millions and millions of dollars spent every year paying scientists. To come out with reports about the climate not anymore let me read these three headlines this morning that were in the financial times that i read a few hours ago i'm just going to give you the headlines i'm not going to read the full article talking about your cop 29 and climate change so here's your first article for the climate change it says donald trump election victory deals a blow to u.s clean energy industry developers of solar and battery recycling projects put plans on hold and missed concerns that the policy and the federal government support. So in the article, it basically says they're all worried that the federal government's not going to give them any money. The next one was record global warming risks aggregating, ag aggregating war and violence. At COP29, negotiators will be discussing the fate of the planet already riddled with climate riddled conflict. And the conflict basically is water um, and what you guys were just talking about. And the last article was, which was interesting, um, how each country's admission and climate goals compare a searchable dashboard of 193 countries, historical emissions and future climate targets. Um, it goes to US, China, Brazil, blah, 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 blah. So yes, yeah, so it is on everybody's mind what will happen now that Mr. Trump is yeah. president regarding and climate it's change. It's so important to America that they haven't even bothered to send a delegation of any value. To, well, uh, we like to tell you what to do. We don't really want to do it. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Listen, it's, oh. it's Mad Magazine had, um, when I was a kid, it was 1968 or 1969, on the back of the magazine, they would have all the cool stickers, and there was a sticker that said, it's like, it, it, Earth, it was a wonderful place, it's coming to an end. And at the very bottom, it's just, just like everything else. So, unless we do something, in whatever amount of time, we come to an end. That's it. And if you yeah. believe in whatever you believe in, if you believe in the universal theory, which the universe just keeps making a big circle, we'll be back. And we'll be discussing this all over again, and it'll come to an end because well, no maybe one will we'll learn be, their lesson. Maybe we'll be doing that next time we're on. I've got oh, next on. time I propose something else uh, because uh, I got my DNA results. 
Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, and it is right. interesting. I, I'm not Jewish. I'm European. That's totally okay. European. Right. But it was a surprise because I already had two countries. Oh, don't tell us, don't tell us. No, so I, I won't. I, I won't tell it. I won't tell it. I just okay. will say that I, I'm already, you know, like uh, right, so next week to countries international. But okay. the hint is, I'm not too much of those two countries. Uh, I mean, by the so that's next the hint. Week's show is added yeah. in his DNA. I like it. Yeah. Ah, but that's we'll talk week. about no. It's uh, you know, it's not about me, but we'll talk don't generally talk about, about that. I would tell you that it, it kind of affected me, though, because really? it was a kind of surprise to me. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know it. I just didn't know. Yeah. So and next it was week's a, show is it, it was it was is no concern. It, That's what it was. It was it was a big percentage. So right. I'm kind right. of clear. OK, there is a mixture, but the, right. there, there is a big percentage of something I had no clue about. So, so that keep is, the lid on the can. Keep the lid right. on the can. Keep right. the lid on something. Everybody, don't all forget right, to right. subscribe and and uh, I can subscribe and like um, the podcast. Subscribe, and like, and love. And don't forget pussy. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. We love like pussies. Love, really. um, Be a pussy so that we love you more. <laughs> there you go. The show will be broadcasted on Tuesday so you can enjoy it. We will see everybody next week with Adam live. Oh, someone's saying something before we leave. Dawn says, cheers. Cheers, Dawn. We love having you. Thank you so bye much. Bye-bye, Dawn. Everybody, everybody else. We'll talk to you all later. Cheers. Yeah.